gathers all of his dragon brothers, and together they assemble a fancy outfit for Wukong just to get him out of their house. When he returns to Flower Fruit Mountain to show his mates his gear, he gets so hyped up that he briefly turns into a huge demonic caricature of himself, which terrifies the local demon population so much that demon kings show up at his front door to form an alliance with him. So life is going pretty well for the Monkey King. So the Ten Kings are like, Whoa, there must have been some kind of mistake. I mean, there must be a bunch of dudes named Sung Wukong, right? And Wukong is like, Yeah, right. Show me where that's written down. So they sort through all the ledgers of the dead until they find the one about him, and he scribbles out his name, along with the names of as many monkeys as he can find, thus freeing them from the jurisdiction of the underworld gods. So then Prince Nada confronts Wukong, who's like, What are you, 12? Look, kid, just tell your boss I want to be called Great Sage Equal to Heaven, alright? And Nada's like, I'll show you who's 12! And transforms into a big scary monster with a butt-ton of weapons. Wukong is, of course, unimpressed, and matches the transformation with one of his own. Suggest to God who could be sent to fight Wukong, Erlang, a powerful loose cannon of a deity who don't play by the Jade Emperor's rules. So they summon him, and he goes to confront Wukong, who's like, Oh, hey, if you don't mind, could you send out the Devarajas to fight me? Because I'm, I'm kind of getting bored over here. And Erlang is like, Not as bored as you're gonna be. And they fight. They both end up turning into Godzilla-scale monsters, but Wukong inadvertently terrifies his own army into a rout with how scary he looks. Blasts off from Buddha's hand until he reaches the very edge of the universe itself, where he finds five pillars supporting the sky. Wukong decides to leave a memento of himself there, graffitiing one of the pillars, and then, for good measure, peeing on it. I mean, he is a monkey. So Wukong backflips all the way back to Buddha's palm like, Shows what you know, old man! I made it all the way to the pillars of the universe! And the Buddha's like, Is that so? Well, I have a little plot twist for you. See, one of the perks of enlightenment is that I'm one with everything, and as it turns out, that's not just hyperbole. Sure enough, written on one of Buddha's fingers is Wukong's graffiti, along with the faintest whiff of monkey pee. Turns out the whole universe is the palm of Buddha's hand. So as it turns out, the mountain they get to is none other than Five Phases Mountain, where our good buddy Sun Wukong is still languishing. So Wukong's like, yo, kid, you that pilgrim guy? Kuan Yin said you'd be coming by to let me out. And Tripitak is like, awesome. How do I do that? That mountain looks kind of heavy. And Wukong's like, you just gotta climb to the top and peel off the golden seal. Aww. So Tripitaka manages to get the seal off the mountain, and after he backs off to the minimum safe distance, Wukong breaks the mountain in half and zips on over. So Tripitaka and Sun Wukong continue westward together. So soon enough, they reach a huge, turbulent river, which would be bad enough on its own. But then a huge monstrous demon pops out of the river and makes the situation even worse. Wukong nopes out of there with Tripitaka in tow while Pigsy and the River Spirit fight. Local mountain demon, the White Bone Spirit, who pops out to see what's up. She sees Tripitaka and immediately realizes he's the monk all the demons are talking about. So Tripitaka gets really mad and uses the magic migraine spell, then tells Monkey that a killer can't be one of his disciples. But Monkey manages to persuade him to let him stay, and the group awkwardly treks on after burying the totally innocent girl. So Monkey obviously insta-kills her, again, and Tripitaka flips out, uses the migraine spell, and with Pigsy's encouragement, kicks him out of the group again. So sure enough, it's migraine time and getting kicked out of the group o'clock. This time Monkey's like, alright, you know what, fine! And after Tripitaka writes an official letter of banishment and Monkey is aggressively polite in taking his leave, Monkey warns Sandy not to bind to Pigsy's BS and then blasts off. The true fire of Samadhi isn't either of those things, and is actually managing to hurt him. Red Boy smokes him again, so Monkey blindly launches himself out of the inferno and into the nearest river, where the temperature shock knocks him out. Sandy fishes him out of the water and freaks out in turn because he looks pretty dead. But Pigsy scoffs, elbows him to one side, and revives Monkey with a few well-placed smacks on the back. But Tripitaka can. During his monk training, he recalls meditating for years at a time, so this competition should be a snap for him. Monkey flies him up disguised as a cloud, and Tripitaka and the Goat Strength Immortal begin their meditation competition. So Tiger Strength Immortal gets his head cut off, but when he calls for it to return, Monkey turns one of his hairs into a dog, which runs off with the head and drops it into the moat. Unable to simply grow a new head like Monkey, Tiger Strength Immortal dies and reverts to his true form, which is a yellow tiger. But it turns out this is what the demon was waiting for. He pulls out a white jade ring and throws it into the air. The copies all shoot back into one staff, which then gets sucked into the ring and disappears. Now completely disarmed, Monkey's at a serious disadvantage and has no choice but to run. So Monkey grabs eternal 12-year-old Prince Nada and his long-suffering father, Devaraja Lee, plus an army of more generic divine soldiers and a couple thunder squires to throw lightning at the problem. So Nada insists on going first, and he and the demon fight for a while before Nada switches into his three-headed, six-armed war form and starts really kicking ass. However, when he tosses his weapons into the air to multiply them, the demon pulls out the ring again and all the weapons vanish. Buddha declares that the false monkey, who is clearly aware of distant events in order to maintain his disguise, must therefore be the six-eared macaque. The macaque, now exposed, freaks out and tries to run, but he's quickly surrounded, and when he turns into a bee to try and escape, Buddha traps him under his golden alms bowl, revealing his true form. Sun Wukong, enraged at what the six-eared macaque put him through, kills it, which upsets the Buddha, but Monkey points out he was guilty of assault and robbery anyway, and any court would have had him executed regardless. <laughs> 